Have you ever heard of the Kleinunternehmerregelung and wondered what exactly it is and when it might be interesting for you? Then you will get all the information in this video. Hi, my name is Melchior from Contis Tax Consulting and the Kleinunternehmerregelung is especially interesting for new entrepreneurs and part-time self-employed people. And there's a lot of confusion simply because there are two terms. There is the Kleinunternehmerregelung, which is very often confused with Kleingewerbe. Also, there are different turnover limits that you have to pay attention to. And yes, many new founders are confused about this. And that's why we go through this piece by piece in this video. In this video, we will go through the different aspects that you should know about the Kleinunternehmerregelung. First of all, let's start with the basics. The Kleinunternehmerregelung is regulated in paragraph 19 of the Umsatzsteuer Act. And that's the most important thing you need to know. The Kleinunternehmerregelung only refers to the Umsatzsteuer and basically says that you don't need to indicate any Umsatzsteuer. This means that you don't have to make an advance return for Umsatzsteuer. You don't have to show any Umsatzsteuer in your invoices and you pay 0% Umsatzsteuer on your invoices. You can take advantage of these regulations and this simplification if you have a turnover of less than 22,000 per year in the previous year and you expect to have a turnover of less than 50,000 euros per year this year. You have to look at each year and ask yourself, what sales did I make and what sales do I expect this year? If you are below these limits, then you can take advantage of this regulation and you don't have to submit an advanced UST return. If you founded your company this year and therefore you don't have a previous year, then your turnover is valid for this year and the rule of the 22,000 euros euros applies to you, but pro rata temporis. That means you have to take the months in this year you were actually self-employed and reduce the 22,000 euro limit accordingly. For example, if you became self-employed on July 1st of this year, then you will have been self-employed for exactly half a year, which then puts the limit of the Kleinunternehmerregelung at 11,000 euros. For many founders, this Kleinunternehmerregelung is not particularly relevant because of the relatively low limits. Because if you want your self-employment to be your main income source, then admittedly 22,000 euros annual turnover is not very much because if you have 22,000 euros turnover, then you are likely to make even less profit and making a living from that will be difficult. However, if you start your self-employment part-time, then the Kleinunternehmerregelung could be a great bureaucratic relief for you. What is also probably important for you to know is that the Kleinunternehmerregelung is not linked to a specific legal form. If you are solo self-employed or a freelancer, you can take advantage of it. But also, for example, as a GmbH, as a UG, as a GBR or as an OHG. For the Kleinunternehmerregelung, this has no relevance because, as I said, it only refers to the Umsatzsteuer and UST tax applies to all legal forms. Kleinunternehmer is often confused with Kleingewerbe. I see this confusion over and over and I would like to clarify this topic in this video once and for all so you don't get confused as well. The mixing of the two terms is what creates the confusion. The Kleinunternehmerregelung, i.e. a small business owner, is regulated in the Umsatzsteuer Act and only refers to the UST tax. It's about how you write your invoice and whether you have to submit an advance UST return. Kleingewerbe is a term from commercial law, so from the German Commercial Code, HGB, and describes tradesmen who do not have to register in the commercial register. And I'll give you two examples to clarify this difference. Take a GmbH. A GmbH cannot be a Kleingewerbe by definition because a GmbH is always registered in the commercial register. But a GmbH can very well be a Kleinunternehmer if it stays under the turnover limits and if the managing director of the GmbH decides to be a Kleinunternehmer. Another example are freelancers. Freelancers are not Gewerbetreibende and therefore do not qualify as Kleingewerbetreibende. But freelancers can of course still be Kleinunternehmer if they are below the turnover limits. So if you now research this topic and watch other videos on YouTube, please remember that these are two completely different terms. If you now research how to write your invoice and so on, please search for Kleinunternehmer. Anyone talking about Kleingewerbe is either mixing the terms or is talking about something completely different. Let's move on to how you can apply for the Kleinunternehmerregelung. If you are at the beginning of your self-employment, then you need to fill out the tax registration questionnaire to register with the tax office in the first place. In this questionnaire, you will be asked how much turnover you have this year, the year 
Zero Foundation and the following year. This information about the turnover is important for a few things, amongst others for the Kleinunternehmerregelung. That is, if you enter sales here that are below the limits of the 22,000 euros, then you can apply for the Kleinunternehmerregelung directly in this questionnaire. But also important to know, you can do it later. This means that if you have not done it yet, you can still apply for the Kleinunternehmerregelung informally later. Informally just means that there's no form that you have to fill out. Usually a letter, an email, or sometimes even a phone call will be enough to bring you into the Kleinunternehmerregelung so that you don't have to show UST on your invoices. But the whole thing also goes the other way and many people don't know that. You don't have to claim it. That means even if your sales are low, and could actually fall into the Kleinunternehmerregelung, you don't have to do it. You can still indicate Umsatzsteuer and pay UST tax. This does have a few advantages, which goes beyond the frame of this video and on which I have already recorded a separate video, which you can find here. However, if you do actually waive your right to be a Kleinunternehmer and you don't do the whole UST tax thing, you do commit yourself for at least five years. You need to be aware of that before you actively decide against it. The biggest impact of the Kleinunternehmerregelung is on your accounting. Fairly obvious because you don't indicate Umsatzsteuer on your invoices. That's the reason why you could or should use this rule in the first place. Your invoices may then not contain the UST items at all or you write 0% Umsatzsteuer on every invoice and therefore do not pay Umsatzsteuer. It is important, however, that you tell your customers why you don't include UST tax because otherwise they won't know if the invoice is right or wrong. So every invoice that you issue as a Kleinunternehmer needs to indicate whether there's UST or not. So you could, for example, write, this invoice has been issued without Umsatzsteuer in accordance with section 19 of the Umsatzsteuer Act. You can find an example of what this might look like in the video description. You can simply copy it one to one. You will not receive any Umsatzsteuer from your customer and the counterpart to Umsatzsteuer is input tax. When you pay your suppliers and your service providers and your telephone contract and so on, on the invoices that you have to pay, there's usually Umsatzsteuer indicated. And normally you can claim this Umsatzsteuer as input tax in your advanced Umsatzsteuer return. On this whole Umsatzsteuer calculation, I have also recorded another video, by the way, that you can find linked here if you're interested. But as a Kleinunternehmer, you don't need to do this whole calculation at all. That means you don't have to file any advanced Umsatzsteuer returns, where others have to do all these calculations and do their bookkeeping on a monthly or quarterly basis. So you don't have to actually submit an advanced UST return and you can't claim it in input tax. So let's get to the big question. When is it actually worth for you? If you have end customers, so basically consumers, so end users as customers, then the Kleinunternehmerregelung might be very interesting for you because you can offer lower prices than the competition or have a higher profit margin because the competition may have to sell with Umsatzsteuer and therefore always has to pay tax. It is important to know though that your company will grow over time and at some point you will fall out of the Kleinunternehmer system and you will have to charge Umsatzsteuer, which means you'll have to adjust your prices upwards later or possibly your profit margins will decrease. Ideally, you should already consider today whether you will be able to communicate and install this price adjustment later. If you have business customers, i.e. if you are active in the B2B sector and companies use your services, then the Kleinunternehmerregelung usually makes no sense at all. For the simple reason that if you indicated Umsatzsteuer, then your customers would be able to get the Umsatzsteuer that you indicated on your invoice and received from them back from the tax office in their Umsatzsteuer advance return. This means that if your customers are companies, then the Kleinunternehmerregelung makes no sense in the vast majority of cases. Finally, let's come back to the topic of what actually happens if you go beyond these turnover limits and, so to speak, go from being a small business owner to a large business owner, which is obviously a joke. It's not called Großunternehmer. But what happens when you are over these limits and have to switch from the Kleinunternehmerregelung to a normal standard taxation? And there are two limits here, the previous year with 22,000 euros and the current year of less than 50,000 euros. The 22,000 euros are easily explained. You look at your sales from the previous year and they are either above or below. Confusion sometimes arises with the turnover for the current year because the law says foreseeably 
below 50,000 euros, and that confuses people. Here, it's very important to know that it is only about your estimate, what you expect or what you did expect to make in sales at the beginning of the year. And that estimation then applies for the whole year. That means you're either a Kleinunternehmer for the whole year or not a Kleinunternehmer for the whole year. If the year goes significantly better than you expect, for example, if you expected to make 40,000 euros in sales this year, but the year goes incredibly well and you make 100,000 euros in turnover, you don't have to suddenly change something in June, July, August and suddenly start reporting Umsatzsteuer during the year. The only thing that matters here is what you thought you'd earn in the beginning of the year. And this applies for the whole year. If you then make 100,000 euros in turnover, then in the following year, so on January 1st, you will have to pay Umsatzsteuer because the rule is that you look at the previous year and with 100,000 euros, you are, of course, above the limit of 22,000 per year. And my practical experience is that the tax office is usually very tolerant as far as these limits are concerned. It has happened two or three times that the tax office really asked, but they very rarely do ask about it. And when they do ask, it's enough if you argue for yourself how you calculated at the beginning of the year approximately and how you estimated that you'd be under 50,000 euros. In practice, I have never seen any problems with that at all. The only problem that can occur is if you do your accounting too late. So if accounting is not your biggest friend and you do your accounting a half a year or a year later for that year. To give you an example, it's now June 2021 and you sit down and you do your bookkeeping for last year and now you realize that contrary to your expectations, you made more than 22,000 euros in sales. Because for example, you might have reached 25,000 euros and now you sit there and you would not have been a Kleinunternehmer since January 1st of this year. That means that now you have to correct all your invoices between January and it is now June. And then that is super annoying because there's only two ways to solve this. First option, you can call all your customers and apologize that you were too stupid to send your invoices correctly and ask them to transfer the missing Umsatzsteuer now. Or, the second possibility, because this is a stupid situation, you accept your gross amount, so the invoice total, the gross amount, and pay the Umsatzsteuer from that. That is incredibly annoying because you suddenly have to pay 7 or 19% Umsatzsteuer on something where you had previously had a calculation and the money you thought you'd earned suddenly has to go to the tax office. This is not pleasant. And so my recommendation would be that if you are a Kleinunternehmer, every year in November, December, you simply add all your sales of the year together. Briefly analyze where you stand so that you know what you need to do at the start of the new year and whether you are still a Kleinunternehmer. I hope this short video could help you out a little and answer your questions. If you have further questions on the topic, then leave us a comment under this video or even better, let's talk in person. We, Contus Tax Consulting, are specialized tax consultants specifically for the self-employed, and we would be happy to meet with you. Otherwise, please subscribe to our channel. You can do that here. We have also recorded other videos which you can find, for example, here or here.